Good evening, campers. It's the review you've all been waiting for. Yes, the follow-up to The Learned Disguise. Now, before we talk about the next book, how did I leave it with Walton in my last review? It was trash. From the first sentence, you, you, like, completely put me in this zone of what am I even going to read? I read a lot of debuts, and I know you're meant to improve with each book, but like, I don't think you can get worse, if I be completely honest. You, you cannot publish another book like that. You can't. For free, I will read your upcoming book. Right, reach out. I will proofread it for you. I'll read it for free. I'm, I'm happy to provide that service. It's not even like, a, it's not even like credible. Oh, that's why I'm giving this a zero out of ten. I'll be reviewing Academy. I'll spend my hard earned dollars like a... Like I did that one, and I'll review it. Walden saw the video and did two things. One promised that he wasn't going to write another book that would irritate the hell out of me, to which I responded that I would be gunning for him. And secondly, a few weeks later, possibly a month, he removes this from sale. You cannot buy this any more. And in his video when he announced the release of L'Academy, he said that you don't need to read this. You don't need to read this. That it makes him feel nauseous when he reads it. And Walden, I don't think when it came to this book, you took any criticism. What you have done is pretty much stuck to your guns. I'm going to rip this book apart because you're ripping people off. Let me explain. The Learned Disguise, yes, it was up for sale. But I don't think many people bought it. With the absolute rise in your channel, people want to read this. And you were charging £10 or thereof equivalent for this book, which you claim you have developed your writing style. You're an avid reader. You want to hone your craft. Yet you have done none of those. I want to talk about this book from the cover to the cover. I'm being quite literal. You took no criticisms in. You have not listened to anyone in regards to how to better yourself. You are in a university where you are constantly criticised and challenged on your thoughts, your writings and your readings of text. You should be used to this by now because there is no way that someone as devoted as yourself that you claim to be could produce this. Furthermore, I would like to add that this is the fifth draft of L'Academy. But it wasn't just Walden's eyes who went over this. Apparently there were five editors. Walden, I would like you to release the names of those editors. Not because I want to use them, but I think you should publicly shame them for the atrocity that they did in not proofreading or doing any corrections. There are minefield of issues, of typos, grammatical sentences, of sloppiness once again. You say that you're passionate about your craft, but you're really spitting in the face of anyone who works and slaves away at developing their writing. You only produce this because you have an audience. It's not because you're proud of this work. You're doing it for a quick buck. That is solely what I believe. I don't even have to open this book to show you how little Walden has proofread his own work or that it passed five editors because l'academy is a French word. And on that first E, where's the accent? Where's the accent right there? Just this little one here. Don't tell me it's a stylistic thing because you managed to put the apostrophe here by the L. Where is it? I would like to know. I am going to reiterate this at the end of the video. Walden, take this book down before the international release date. Do not mug your audience off. You should not be profiteering. You are a cowboy writer. Respect the audience that follows you and has given you your platform. Do not charge for this book. Get it off, get it actually edited and actually do a good 
job. It is cretinous that you were even charging for this book. And if you have read this, or if you haven't, and are still holding Walden as a great writer, you are equally as jaded. Shall we start on page one? No, I'm not finished. Within the front of the book, you attribute the line, innocence once lost can never be regained, darkness once gazed upon can never be lost, to John Milton. Walden, next time you write a book, mate, could you at least, like, message me and say, what aren't I doing for my PhD? Because I'm going to catch up on these things. You said The Learned Disguise was a Faustian tale. It is not. Milton never said that in Paradise Lost or Paradise Regained. Now, I'll give you some credit. You didn't actually attribute it to either of those works. But if you don't believe me, because I could just pick up my copy of Paradise Lost that I have been studying and just tell you that, well, it's not in here, you might be reluctant to hear my views. So I did what anyone could do. I went on Google and I typed in the complete works of John Milton on Project Gutenberg. It's public information. And there are a list of all of John Milton's works to a great degree. Type in the word innocence, Walden. It doesn't come up. Type in the word darkness, Walden. Your quote doesn't come up. Guess what? I know where that quote comes from. You've not quoted Lucifer from Paradise Lost. You've quoted Lucifer from Neil Gaiman's Sandman. You've quoted a graphic novel, specifically volume four, episode two in Seasons of Mists, where Lucifer says, and here is the proof. Where the quote about darkness once gazed upon, I'm not entirely sure where that comes from, but if you can prove to me, if you can give me a source, a line, a reference, you are in university, you should know how to do this, I'll take that one back. I'll take that one back. For two years you have built anticipation and hype for the academy, and you have not once looked over this. I do not believe it. I do not believe the five editors went through this book, FUD, and I think now we could talk about chapter one. Our main character is Eddington. I'm gonna call him Ed for simplicity and the fact that most of the characters call him Ed. Ed lives under a regime called the regime. There's a lot of this, trust me. All the people under the regime were earbuds and these earbuds allow them to get any information that they want there and then. And they go to Academy to learn that. Let's let's think about this um, for a sec. So basically what Walden has done is said that everyone basically has Wikipedia on their phones, but hourly, even though they can engage with that at any moment, they have to go to L'Academy. They have to go to a place. Why? Surely the place is obsolete. Don't worry about it. I don't think Walden has thought about this. Ed is equally submissive and complicit to this regime. He doesn't want to stand out, but something happens called the cross, where memories seen from a distant lifetime ago ebb in and cause him to remember a life very different. The event, the event or the cross takes up many pages, but we're just gonna park it aside for the moment, but we'll pick up on it at some point. Trust me, we, we do pick up on it. Let's go back to the streets. On signs in black and white, it tells you to report double rods. What are double rods? Well, you're really thrown to this dystopian universe. Ed and us are trying to figure out what exactly a double rod is. And we're going to meet Ada. Ed is in a cafe speaking to the man of history where we understand that within the academy it's all about factual recall. The man of history questions Ed on something and Ed has to regurgitate the information as fact. Ada walks past and places a rod in Ed's hand and here we go, ah, double rod, I see what's going on here. No, it's like a little bit of a red herring, I don't even know why that happens. Ada and Ed do have a conversation about what a double rod is. And on page 62, Ada shook her head. Double rods, do you know much about physics? A bit. Double rods induce a chaotic pattern. Yes, yes, 
Then, imagine, something changed, and we just drop it. Walden just goes, well, that's my answer, I'm walking away, we're not going to talk about it at all. He doesn't really know what he's talking about, but what I think he's getting at is that we might be called a double rod in Australia, so this isn't me nitpicking, but it's, it's a double pendulum. And the fact that if you have a singular pendulum or a single rod, you can you could track the motion. You understand that it's ordered and you know what it's going to do and you can predict what's happening next. Insert animation here. When you have a double pendulum, you can't track it. You have no idea what it's going to do and there's no reason behind it. It's You can't track it. You can't predict anything. That's what a double rod is. Someone who isn't conforming, I think. Again, Walden really hasn't given you much on this and will not discuss it any further. But who is Ada? Ada is part of a group of rogues that are interested in Ed because he's obtained a book. And who's he got that book from? Archer. Arthur turns out to be a double agent in the end. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Archer's only real purpose, apart from some interactions towards the end, is there to give Ed a book. I wonder what book he's given. Well, let's talk about that. He's given a copy of Jean Paul Chart's Nausea. And this is a prohibited item. Books are banned. You aren't able to have them in your possession. Ed takes the book home and in the bathroom starts to read. He understands the words, he processes them, and then becomes nauseous. This book is extremely literal, and I don't think a metaphor has even sneezed on this book. And somewhere I would like to think, in a parallel universe, Walden wrote this book, but instead of nausea, he put in The Grapes of Wrath by Steinbeck, and then a fruit bowl attacked him. And in some way, I would have preferred that. <laughs> a minute buddy i got you here you said the regime was omnipresent and omnipotent that there were eyes and ears everywhere why has no one picked up on this yeah yeah you're right it seems as though the streets are completely managed but every single alley and every single stairway in this book they just haven't bothered to cover yet they probably just don't have the budget oh, i know there's one walden reader there thinking yeah, he's critiquing the economy and capitalism. No, I just don't think he knows what he's talking about and can't plot a story. Yeah, you can go anywhere in these alleys. And even your own house. Well, only the bathroom, probably due to privacy laws. And again, the entire novel could be set in Ed's bathroom and everything would be fine. Ed and the rogue sitting there in the bath going... Hmm, just 20 more minutes of the time we all blow dry each other's hair, garbage season will be approaching. All the books are taken during garbage season. Again, not really explained, it's just, there you go. Who are the rogues? We have Ada, Joe and Frank. And what are the rogues like? Well, you're probably sitting there going, I think I know what a rogue is like. Take that stereotype and cookie cutter approach, that's exactly what you have. Apart from Joe, who has an accent, and dare I say, some of them have a penchant for smoking tobacco. <gasps> who knew smoking could be a character trait? All the shifty characters here smoke, and we get long descriptions of people puffing on cigarettes and then stamping them out with their boot. <coughs> who would have known? Joe's accent, however, does not make any sense because Walden uses apostrophes in order to bring a sense of colloquialism. But if you have a look on page 113 and page 114, you will see that he is using words like sweet and pants and like that don't make any sense. Walden, do we have to go through what an apostrophe is? You're in university, you're studying literature, you read books all the time. You know how to use an apostrophe. What are you doing? Five editors saw this, remember that? Five editors looked over this and went, there's nothing wrong there. And you don't even have to look that much further because on page 117, this book's absolutely surreal at times. Ed has read some of Nausea. 
and begins speaking French within his sleep. When he wakes up, the rogues are going, what language were you speaking in? Why are we pretending that France and French don't exist? And I'm not being facetious here. All the way throughout this book, we are talking about the French Revolution. We have big French characters. We have Jean-Paul Sartre in this. They would know what French is. Surely in l'Academie, if you can recall anything at any time where in Eubud, you would know that. On top of this, Ed obtains a different book, but the cover has been removed. So we don't know the specific title of this, but it doesn't take a little bit of knowledge or even a Google search to type in the character to realize this is Jack Kerouac's On the Road. And Ed's going, ah, the United States of America. Imagine that. Similar to the French Revolution, the American Revolution even crops up in this book before this. Why are we pretending that the United States of America isn't a concept? This is absolutely bizarre and just mind-boggling how Walden, after spending two years writing this, after drafting it, can't even keep tabs on his own story. I am struggling. You would only not notice it if you're not paying any attention to the book at all. And I'm gonna to prove to you the Walden isn't even looking over his sentences and that things just don't make sense. Page 152, Ed is going to ask the man of history his name. That's it, he's going to ask what's your name because he doesn't know it. To show I'm not pulling any smoke and mirrors or I'm taking anything out of context, but beside me, here is the entire page before it where Ed is overhearing a conversation that has no relevance to what is about to happen. 152, and I'm just going to read from Ed, the man of history stood up. You can read before it, you can pause it, you can read it yourself. I'm not pulling any tricks here. Ed, the man of history stood up. Hi, um, Eddington paused. He'd never know the man's name and never bothered the ask. Five editors. Hi, um, the man of history mimicked him, tilting his head. Stop lingering there, will you? What's your... The man was even more confused. Only remembered you as the history person. Eddington shrugged. Ah, there we go. The name's Thomas, but you can call me Tom. How could... Common sense? Pain. Thomas. Thomas' eyes glowed. Yes. How have we overcomplicated what's your name? How does... Tom, know what the question is, what's your, and Ed deduces it as common sense? What's going on? None of this book makes any sense at all. I'm trying to give you a sense of how the narrative itself is frayed, that it doesn't really know how it connects. Because we're ripping off every single dystopian, let's just add The Handmaid's Tale into the mix with a dual timeline where Ed is in a world before the regime took over, where he has a copy of the Iliad and he wants to read it to his love interest at the stream. This then goes right towards the end. This is the, the climax of the book where Archer the double agent tells Ed that his love interest is dead. And he goes, by the regime. And Archer goes, don't spy disease. By the way, I got it. All of this book is incoherent babble. And the message that I thought Walden was thinly trying to get across was that books are important because the more that you read, the more likely that you're able to retain that knowledge, that you build empathy, not just sympathy when you engage with a text, that you're able to put yourself within the time period. You're able to experience things outside of your comfort, outside of your life. I thought that was the case until page 262, a conversation between Tom and Ed. How do you remember that? I've read it, Eddington said. So you're saying if you read something, you'll remember it, Tom said? Only the relevant stuff, really. Then what's the, why is L'Academy, that's what, that's what L'Academy's do 
doing? What is the point that you were trying to make? I don't think it is a point. You lay it on thickly. That's the criticism of Academy that you should read because you, you just undermined your point. Again, Walton, I don't think you've thought about any of this. And to quote you on page 189, would it be crazy to say that reading is hard? Yes, when it's this badly written. And why do all the characters, when they have a conversation, have to say the name? Why are there so many ellipses? The characters almost take on what I imagine is Walden's writing process, where he sits down, writes a word and goes, ah, how am I going to like propel this story along? Let's everyone just take five. Hmm. What a... Uh... It's almost a sadistic parody that when you released this book, the video sponsor was a TLDR service that, oh, you don't have to read the book, just condense it down, get the bits that you need to know, which is what the Academy's doing. The, honestly, Walden, why are you charging people for this book? You should be absolutely ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed. There's so many issues with this. None of it makes sense. And do what the worst bit is. Even on the front, as we've discussed, you spelt like had a me wrong. One of the last mentions of it. 289. You've, you've missed the lure out of it. You've missed, you've just called it academy. You've, you've written this word a hundred times. You have built hype around academy. How on earth? Did you bloody miss that? How did you do that? If you took this entire book, ripped all the words and stuck it on Microsoft Word, there would be a field day on spell check. It'd be like, like it would just be a rave of red lines, blue and green going, what, what the hell's going on here? Do that for me, mate. There's a text file somewhere. Send it to your mates. Stick it on Microsoft Word and just see the absolute monstrosity that you were charging £10 for. I dread saying it, but I genuinely thought that you were going to write something better than The Learned Disguise. But in hindsight, The Learned Disguise at least had a plot that I could follow. This was incomprehensible. You have no idea what you were talking about, what you were writing about sometimes. And, you know, I thought it would be funny, um, but really it's, 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 it's even sadder that I bought a number one birthday blue. So I was going to give you a one out of ten. And then the ending happened where in the fight scenes, ugh, all the characters quote Shakespeare Oh, it's, I'm taking it away. I'm taking it away. You are, I can't tell if you're a genius by fooling everyone or you're just a scumbag. Well, no, you know what, we're going there, Robin. I don't know how egotistical you have to be in your own work and caught up in yourself that this is what you deem as finished. That you you did you finish this and you're like, I'm really proud of what I've done. I know someone's gonna say, oh, but he was a young everyone keeps saying that about you, Robin. You're 20 years old, you're in university, you know exactly what you were doing. Let's not play Let's not play the innocent card. Let's not play the, I was a young writer and I wrote myself out of misery. This should stay locked away. Take it off from sale. Do not mug your audience off. You cannot profiteer from this work. You should not be making a single penny off this book. And anyone who has told you this is good was lying to your face or they're lying to themselves or they're not doing it because they like you. Guess what, Walden? Once is a mistake. Twice is a pattern. I said in my video, you cannot produce another book like this. I offered for free that I would edit, I would proofread your work, and you didn't. You didn't take the offer. You messaged me on Instagram, we arranged a time, and then you blocked me. You asked for people to review this book, to ask for a review copy. And I did, Walden, and I would have done this uh, way nicer via email, but you ignored it. 
rightly so, I ripped your book apart. By selling that, you have no respect for your audience who has given you your platform. You have no respect for them. You are taking impressionable and sycophantic fans to the bank and rinsing them. And you know what? I would much rather have my dignity, my self-worth, and most importantly, my respect. I would rather be truthful and say, I wrote this and it was awful. As someone who appreciates literature, as someone who is currently doing their PhD, as someone who reviews books, this just laughs in the face of literature. You are, you're not even humble about it. You think, you genuinely think this is great and everyone around you will not tell you that you just cannot right. No one in your private life is going to tell you this. Anyone within your circle is never going to tell you this, but I am not going to pat your back. I'm not going to tell you you did a good job, when knowingly you must know you cannot be that delusional. You cannot be that delusional, Walden. The first time I've ever done this, Walden, for a consecutive novel, you have the zero. You have the big fat golden goose egg that you can sit on and go, they're just haters. Oh, they don't like me. They're just haters. Take the book down, Walden. Don't stoke the fire because it is never a pleasure to burn.